Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, this is just a follow-on to the heater build video. Um, the heater is now installed and uh, in use. And you can just about see through the door. There it is, connected with the essential earth that I was uh, talking about earlier. So um, it's just uh, the cables aren't the neatest at the moment so this is kind of the first test run and then I will tidy everything up there's still a load of uh, old cable in and thermocouple cables that are unused in the back um, some of them are used some of them aren't some of them are used for the for the main uh, heat bed up there but some of them are unused so I do need to tidy it up and um, here is the temperature controller that's in there um, and I will explain I have I have wired this up slightly different than what I was intending to do um, I'm, I've only done this now because I, I need this printer running I need it up and running and producing stuff because I'm so far behind um, so I'll just quickly explain what I've done so I'm, I'm using the temperature controller here just to protect the heater so using its own thermocouple that came with the kit from um, Thermosense that thermocouple is connected to this uh, thermostat controller which is there so I'll show you it's connected um, as a K-type thermocouple and it's this one here so this is connected directly to the heat mat and this is protecting the heat mat and what I'm actually doing is I'm not using the uh, solid state relay output I'm actually using the alarm contact in the normally closed format and unfortunately I'm still using the uh, the Arduino Mega and a little uh, LCD display oh, you can't see so that's all in that box still shoved in there just a mess um, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm using the temperature controller there to protect the heat mat and the Arduino and um, the Arduino has its own K-type thermocouple board, which you can't really see, it's buried in there. So the, the uh, other thermocouple that's bolted to the heatsink is being measured also by the Arduino, as well as a separate temperature probe that's in the chamber. So if I show you here, so my ambient chamber temperature is 57.2 the set point is 55 and my set point for the heat sink is 96 degrees um, it's currently holding around 65 66 degrees so I've set my chamber temperature to be um, above 55 and at the moment it's holding an ambient of 57 so it's not using the extra heater at the moment because it's it's brought the temperature up and it's holding it at 57 so we can just about confirm so yeah this is a separate uh, thermometer to totally independent and it just measures the chamber temperature and that's holding at 55 nearly 56 degrees so the Arduino probe is separate and possibly slightly higher in the room but as you can see they're both roughly the same ambient temperature so that's what my chamber temperature is now if it was to drop below 55 then it will pull on the heater and the heater will heat up to about a, uh, well it should heat up to 96 degrees but it'll it'll hold around a hundred at the moment the way I've got the Arduino set, it will hold it around plus or minus four degrees on the 90 of 96, and it tends to hold it exactly about 100. And um, what will happen is, if I am using the heater and the heater uh, 
the heater silicon pad itself goes above 110 on here this will uh, switch the alarm contact and then the alarm contact will basically shut off all heating and, and I won't be able to heat any more so that's the way it's wired at the moment um, I will change this and, and possibly purchase an, another dedicated controller maybe a PNID one um, the reason why I've left the Arduino in there is because there is a slight there is a very small PNID program running that tries to hold the uh, um, chamber heater at a nice temperature and of course I can with the Arduino Mega I can monitor several temperatures at once whereas with the with the controller you can only monitor one one temperature with this um, so this is purely set to protect my silicon heater um, which is generally the component that will fail um, when you're using them lots and so that's what this is for to protect that silicon heater and the Arduino is basically what is controlling the heat in my chamber so like I say it's, it's a bit of a temporary thing again I'm just running out of time until I can wire this all in properly so it's not very neat I'll turn a light on I've tried to tidy it up a little bit not very much as you can see so it's all quite tight in there um, yeah it's all very tight in there actually so yeah it needs a bit more work but unfortunately I just don't have the time now I need to get this working and it is now working so it is printing right at the moment it still looks a total mess uh, in the top there I've got a um, a filter which is uh, basically a particulate and a fume and gas filter in there running on an 80 mil fan can't really see it through there but that's what that is so that just helps take some of the ABS smell out of the chamber before it gets released into the room and that actually works really really well so there we are the heater is installed my printer is up and running again and it's printing stuff um, back as it should be so uh, there we are guys not quite as planned but um, at least this time I do have some proper protection and some proper monitoring on the uh, heating element itself which is the silicon heater and this will soon change when I get a bit of time I will probably put something else here that I set all the cha chamber parameters with this will just protect the heater this is obviously my printer controller and this is where everything is switched on and off and where I also do some separate monitoring this one has broken uh, the LED in the back has gone it still functions but you barely read it this is actually the bottom chamber temperature so at the very bottom of my ch chamber is actually 44.2 degrees uh, it's just a shame the LED doesn't work anymore and um, yeah these are for something else they were for jet nozzle cooling which is um, I'll cover that with another video one day when I get to install these again but anyway chamber, temp uh, chamber heater is back in and uh, that's my chamber temperature at the moment and I'm printing an ABS um, large part that takes about 14 hours and there's my bed temperature and my nozzle temperature and I'm 7% in and it's been printing for 2 hours and 38 minutes already and I'm only 3 millimeters on Z height so as you can tell it's not got very far so this is an early test but so far everything is working fine and uh, yeah hopefully it will uh, survive long enough so I can finish my uh, my printing off so there we are guys chamber heater is installed and successfully working
and hopefully working for a long time. Thank well, it's been um, six hours into the first uh, print with the new chamber heater and uh, everything's still running fine so I'm about 50% through the print and we're, we appear to be holding a heat mat temperature of 89 degrees with a chamber temperature of 57 degrees so let's just have a look in here and that confirms the same 57 and the, the actual heat sink the heater itself is holding at about 79 80 but the heat mat as you can see is slightly hotter which is why I do monitor the two separately just to make sure I protect the heat mat um, and not overdrive it ever really so I want it to last a long time so yeah there we are six hours in nearly seven hours in and everything's running okay only another six and a half hours to go and we shall see if the print was successful well my uh, printer has just finished its first print with the new heater and as we can see the uh, ambient temperature in the chamber is about 56 still the heat mat is 72 and um, it has just finished 10 hours 58 minutes um, so let's see if um, there's any improvement Okay, so I'm still over extruding at the moment until I'm more confident that this is working fine. So there's quite a few layer lines, but what there isn't is any splits. Not one. So anyway, I'm going to get this out quickly and get another one off on the go. I don't want to lose too much heat out of here. go for another one. Let's have a look at our print. So as I say it's uh, heavily over extruded in places so there's quite a few layer lines but what there isn't is any splits and uh, layer lines I can cope with splits and warps I can't and as you can see there are none so much better so I'm just going to remove this and see how it comes off but this one looks good thankfully That needs a bit of cleaning up, but that's uh, expected. 
no splitting. Excellent. Nice. Solid, strong enclosure. Exactly what I was hoping for. And um, hopefully I can catch up and get the rest done. So we're off again. Off she goes. Off to the heavens. And let's just see how this does pick up actually. I will open this. I don't like opening the door too much, but here we go. What's she gonna do? Is she gonna make a mess? No. Off she goes. For another one. Excellent. So there we go. Heater. First test run. Successful. And the first print is successful. Uh, and what can I say on that really? It's um, back to where I was a few days ago. So thanks for watching this guys on the heater install. Um, I will do another one when I update the heater more and the controls better. I uh, might do a bit more information on the circuit diagram and whatever. But for now I just needed this printer running. And um, it is doing so. And uh, it is now about half past six in the morning on Saturday morning. Um, and I'm going to go and get some breakfast. So uh, cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.